So comparing the new Audio-Technica ATH LS200 with the old Audio-Technica ATH IM02 is a bit like comparing the new 2017 live action Ghost in the Shell with the old 1995 Ghost in the Shell. If I didn't know the original existed, I'd be pretty happy with the new one. Um, but because I love the old one, you can't help but compare them on every single point and get really picky. So let's just do that awkward metaphors out of the way. I finally got my ATH uh, LS200 from Amazon Japan, forwarded through shipping forwarding. Um, cost 21,950 yen uh, plus the Tenso fee. And you can see that in terms of physical differences, uh, there's quite a bit of a difference. Audio Technica has switched to the new design that they've gone with all of their new earphones, this kind of angular, but surprisingly comfortable earpiece design. Um, they've gone with a red translucent shell. I believe this is the only color you can get the LS200 in. Um, it's up to you whether you like this color. Personally, I would have preferred a bit more of a kind of blood red, a darker red, but this is all right. And I do like the kind of translucency, which really lets you see what's going on with the balance armature drivers. They've also gone for the new A2DC um, detachable cable connection. Uh, as opposed to the old two pin connection on the IMO2. And I gotta say, after getting a few Audio-Technica IEMs with this uh, connection, it's, it's sort of grown on me because compared to MMCX, uh, it's a bit like a reverse MMCX, but there's more friction to it. So the ear guides don't rotate as much, which is really nice. That's, that's pretty much the physical differences. One thing is that uh, you can see that the earpiece itself is actually a little shorter not as tall as the Amo 2 EP, so it fits a little more flush in my ears, but it's also a little bit wider, and it's gonna be anyone's guess as to which one is more comfortable for your ears. I can report they're roughly about the same for me. So let's just talk about the sound. So in terms of sound, I would say that these are more similar than they are different. Uh, they have the same sort of basic signature, which is really remarkable given that they use totally different drivers. Um, Tom over at Simba Cavum did a great write up which describes the physical differences, the technical differences between the balanced armature drivers they've used in the LS200 versus the Armo2 and I've linked that article in the description of this video. But basically they've gone with a different manufacturer this time around. They've gone from a base plus uh, tweeter driver to a full range plus super tweeter driver here um, but they sound pretty similar. Um, and it might be due to the fact that the LS200 has a, what appears to be a proper acoustic filter um, compared to the foam on the IMO2, which may have given them a bit more precision in terms of tuning. So let's remind ourselves why the IMO2 is kind of my favorite all-rounder as far as earphones go. Um, and you can see I use it with the Sony hybrid tips. With these tips, uh, it's got a smooth but articulate and layered sound. I think it's got um, a, just a bit of mid-bass color, but overall it's just a really neutral, middle-of-the-road listen. Um, it's smoother to me than the GR07. It's better at layering than the uh, Edemotic ER4XR. And I think you got to spend a lot more, a lot more before you get something that you know, I think is, is as successful as an all-rounder, both in terms of sound and also uh, general kind of ease of uh, livability, you know, wearing comfort, that sort of thing. So what the LS200 brings to that, to that um, sound is with the stock tips, which are here, um, it's basically the same sound as the IMO2, but it's got one more notch in terms of the mids. So things like the, the blare of a trumpet or, or vocals, that sort of thing, they just sound a bit thinner overall. The LS200 sounds thinner than the IMO2. It's got more clarity to the sound, so it, it, it can sound a little less muddled um, than the IMO2, but it's also not as much of an all-rounder because it, it can sound a little more nasal, a little more raw, but I keep saying little because it's not a huge difference um, it's still a really good all-rounder, and if I hadn't heard the original IMO2, I wouldn't really be missing anything in terms of that smoothness. Uh, 
with the LS200, I use the hybrid tips, and with the hybrid tips is a bit more of a compromise between the new LS200 sound and the old IMO2 sound with these Sony hybrids. You get the IMO2 sound, but uh, with just a touch more clarity, a slight lift in the vocal range. It's really nice, and for me, the combination of the LS200 with the hybrid tips is the winner. Conversely, you can actually put something like the LS200 tips on the IMO2, and you get a sound that's pretty similar to the LS200. So that's, that's basically gonna be the conclusion here. There's not a huge difference. If you have the IMO2, I wouldn't upgrade to the LS200. If you can get the IMO2 for a really good price, because it is now a discontinued item, then get it and tip roll until you find the right sound. If they are around the same price, which is basically what I'm seeing these days, um, then I'd say pick one based on uh, based on your preference for color and for whether you like this new detachable cable mechanism compared to the old one. So if you happen to have both of these earphones, then leave a comment and let me know what you think. Uh, in the Amazon Japan package, I also got these. These are the Ochoraku uh, Kodonguris that a lot of people have told me to check out. And these have been a really interesting listen as far as budget earphones go. So I'll talk about these in a future video. Uh, until then, I hope you have a great weekend and happy listening.